So far in this course, we have seen how important states are when working with React. Everything in React comes down to state when there is a component re-rendering or something we want to change in the UI. Therefore, components and their interaction with states, that is really the core aspect of React. And keep in mind that both component and state is managed by React. One of the ways we manage state in React is by using this use state hook. Using use state, we create a new state in a component. So behind the scenes, React creates this state variable and it ties it to the component inside which we have created the state. So in this example, behind the scenes, React will tie this count state and this activate state to this demo component. Now, whenever the state changes, the component inside which we have created that state, that component will be re-evaluated. So in our example, if the value of this count state or this activate state changes, in that case, it will re-evaluate this demo component function. That means this line and this line where we are creating the state that will also get re-executed, right? But for some reason, in these state variables, we always get the latest value. It does not get reinitialized. And the simple reason behind that is use state and the state variable is managed by React. And as a part of that management, React makes sure that use state creates a new state variable and that state variable gets initialized with the value passed to use state as its initial value. So this is done by React. React then basically keeps track of to which component that state belongs to. In our case, these two states belongs to this demo component. Now, whenever the state changes, it will re-execute the component function. So for subsequent component executions, when use state is being called, no new state is being created. So whenever this demo component will be re-executed, this line and this line is not going to create a new state. Instead, React recognizes that it already has these two states for this demo component and React will simply update these states. It will not recreate these states. Okay, so React knows that the component function has been re-executed because of some state change and therefore it does not reinitialize the state. It simply updates the state with the new value. But if the component was totally removed from the DOM and then re-rendered again, let's say conditionally, in that case, component state will be recreated and reinitialized. But as long as the component stays rendered in the DOM, its state will only get updated for each re-execution after that first initialization. So here we took an example of this use state, but same is true for use reducer as well. All right, so now we have some idea on how React manages the state. So let's quickly also talk about how React handles state updates. Let's take example of this demo component. In this demo component, we are creating two states, this count state and this activate state. So React is going to manage these states for this demo component. That's what we have learned. Now here, the initial state for this count variable is zero and the initial state for this activate is false. Now here, let's try to understand the concept with this count state. So whenever the user will click on this plus or this minus button, it is going to change this count state. So this count state will be updated using this set count state updating function. So every time we click on this plus or this minus button, it is going to set a new value for the count variable by incrementing or decrementing it. So initial value of the count is zero. Now, when I click on this plus button, the new value of the count variable will be one. Now what happens here is the initial value, which is zero in this case, that will not be replaced instantly with the new value one, just because set count was executed. Instead, calling a state updating function like this set count schedules a state update with the new data. In our example, set count will schedule a state update with the value one for the count state. Okay, so when we are using this set count method, to update the value of this count variable, this set count will not get executed immediately. Instead, React will schedule a new state update with the latest value. Now the latest value in this case will be one because we have clicked on this plus button. Okay, so here the state change is scheduled and React is aware of it and it plans on processing it, but not just yet. Now, in most of the cases, scheduled state changes will be processed very fast, pretty much instantly. 
So in reality, state updates might feel instant. So in the web page, when I click on this plus button, to me as a user, the change will appear instantly and we can see the new value as soon as we click on this plus or minus button. But that's not the actual case. Internally, React schedules a state update. And once that scheduled state update is processed, then only the new value will be rendered in the web page. Also remember that React reserves the right of actually postponing the state change. For example, let's say a lot of other performance intensive tasks are ongoing at the same moment. The task which React thinks has a higher priority. For example, let's say on our web page, we have an input field and user is typing something in that input field. So React will give this task a higher priority than changing some text on the screen. And for reasons like this, React might postpone scheduled state changes. But what React also does is, it guarantees you the order of state changes for the same type of states. For example, if I click on this plus button, a state change will be scheduled for the new value 1. And when I click on this plus button again, then the new state change will be scheduled with the new value 2. So React guarantees that the first scheduled state is processed first, and then only the next state is processed. So the order is taken into consideration when processing the scheduled updates, but it is not necessarily executed immediately. Keep this point in mind. Eventually though, these scheduled states will be processed and the state will be updated with the latest value. And once that's done, React will reevaluate the component and rerun the component function. Now, because of that scheduling, where you might have multiple non-processed scheduled state changes at the same time, and remember that multiple updates can be scheduled at the same time. So because of that, it is recommended that you use the function form of updating your state if you depend on previous state snapshot. So for example, here when we are creating this count state, we are simply passing this initial value 0. And when we are updating that count variable, we are passing the new value. But instead of using it like this, what we can do is we can use the function form of this state updating function, okay, where we pass a callback function to this state updating function. And to this callback function, we receive the previous state snapshot. And now we can go ahead and we can say count plus one. Okay, so since multiple state updates can be scheduled at the same time, if our state depends on previous state snapshot, in that case, it's better to use this function form where we pass a callback function to the state updating function. Now, in a lot of the cases, this will probably not matter because it will process so quickly that you cannot even click fast enough to see the delay. But because theoretically it could be postponed, using callback for state update is a safe way for ensuring that the state changes are processed in order and for every state change where you depend on the previous state, you get the latest state snapshot. So that's why using callback for state update is better because React ensures that there we get the latest state snapshot and we update that latest state. And same is true for use effect also. So for example, if in your code you are using use effect and to this use effect you are passing callback function and then you also specify a dependency array. And let's say in your callback function you are using this count state. For example, I will simply log the count variable here. Okay, now since we are using this count state inside this callback function, we must specify this count state inside this dependency array. Because if the state of this count variable will change, and if we are not specifying it as the dependency, in that case, this count will never change. So it will always log the previous value of this count variable. And that's why whatever state you use inside the callback function of this use fact, you must specify it as the dependency inside this dependency array so that whenever that dependency will change, this callback function will be re-executed and inside this callback function, the states will be updated with the latest value. Okay, let's go ahead and let's remove this use effect. All right, so this state updating mechanism is something that you need to keep in mind while working with states. And this is important to rule out any potential scenarios where two states are scheduled at the same time and in such cases, we want to avoid working with the outdated data. Now, there is also another point to keep in mind. Let's say we have a function which we are calling on a button click. And in there, we have two state updating functions. So for example, here when we are clicking on this activate button, we are calling this activate handler function. And inside this, we are setting the active state to true. Now inside this function, let's say we also call another state updating function. Let's say maybe this set count. Okay, just for example, and let's say here I want to set this count to zero. 
Okay, so whenever this activate button is clicked, we want to reset the count variable to zero and we want to set this activate to true. And then only user can click on this plus or minus button. All right, so inside this function, we are calling two state updating function. Now here, there will be two questions which will come to your mind. The first question which can come to your mind is, will the second state updating function will ever be executed? Because we have learned that when we call a state updating function, it re-executes the component. So for example, when this activate handler button will be clicked, it is going to call this set activate function. And we have learned that whenever we update the state, it re-executes the component function. So when the set activate will be called, it will re-execute this demo component. So in that case, this set count will ever be called or not. Well, keep in mind that the component function will be re-executed only when the schedule state change is processed and not when the state updating function is called. So we learned that when this set activate function will be called, a state update will be scheduled for that state. Right. So here this set activate is not going to update the value of this activate variable immediately. A state update will be scheduled for that activate state. And when that scheduled state update is processed, then only this demo component will be re-executed. It will not get re-executed when we are calling this state updating function. This demo component will be re-executed when the scheduled state update will be processed. And since this demo component will be re-evaluated when the scheduled state update is processed, when we are calling this set activate, it will schedule a state update. And after that, it will call this set count. So here also again, a new state update will be scheduled. And that's why here, both of these state updating functions will be executed. Now the second question is, since we have two state updating functions, does that mean that the component will be executed twice? And the answer is no. If you have two state updates in the same synchronous code snippet, one after the other, in such cases, React will batch those state updates together. So in this example, React will batch these two state updates together. And keep in mind, this is in case of a synchronous code snippet. That means here, this function will be executed synchronously. It will not get executed asynchronously. So when your code inside which you are calling the state updating function, if it is synchronous and in there you have multiple state updates, then all those state updates will be bashed together and they will be bashed together into one state update. So state update batching is another concept which you need to be aware of when working with React. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.